Mike the Truth Jackson, back with another edition of Fighters Talk, and today I'm joined by John Jones. John, first of all, welcome to Houston. Thank you, man. How you feel to be out here? Man, I feel great to be out here, man. The energy's great, man. The weather's great. People, you know, it's very diverse out here. I'm like, I like it out here. It's cool. I, you know, we talked when we were in Albuquerque. It's not much to do out there. No. So is that like, I guess, a trade-off? No. You get when you're in a camp, you're at home, it just kind of feel comfortable. But when you're on the road traveling, you like to come to these cool spots like Houston. Absolutely, man. This is, it's great, man. It's just so culture rich out here. And uh, yeah, I've been really loving it. I'm getting ready to go over to Twin Peaks. You know what I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> Let the coaches look at some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're uh, back at, uh, I want to say it was like 245 when, when Connor fought recently. Um, one thing that stood out was you were actually actually trending um, during that UFC event. So one thing that I thought about is you two both have this entertaining personality, you're captivating and, and people are, dr are drawn to you, but you're also two different styles of people, so to speak. What characteristics do you feel that you two possess that sort of are gravitating and have the fans just, they want to see you fight and they want to not even just see you fight, they, they are paying attention to you at all aspects of your life. I never really thought about it, you know, I think me and Connor, we come from completely different places, different energies, you know, different styles. Uh, Connor's just captivating, he says the right things, and he's, uh, you know, he is very witty and quick with it, and I think, uh, I think with me, you know, and obviously he's a finisher, he's a dominating fighter, I think with me, you know, um, I think you get a real sense of, of, uh, history or something when it comes to me, you know what I mean, I think, I think, you know, when you watch me fight, you know, you could be watching a part of history as far as, you know, martial arts records and me being one of the best to do it. And I think that's fascinating to people. It's a big responsibility for me to, uh, to give them a show every time and, uh, and, and, and to make history every time. Definitely, man. One thing that I've noticed uh, for this fight, it's been a different fight camp to, or, or from the media's perspective. But one thing that I've noticed about you, you, you have this different maturity about you. And, and I really saw it yesterday um, at the at the athlete panel. One thing that stood out was when we were talking the, the conversations between uh, you and Dominic, and, and one thing you said was like he's being the immature one right now. When did you hit that point? In, not, not even your career, in your life, where you felt more mature and more like an adult, I guess. Uh, you know, honestly, it's been, really been happening um, since I've turned 30. I think it's really when I've started to look myself in the mirror and realize, John, you. You know, you're not a 20-something-year-old kid anymore. You're, you're a 30-year-old grown man. There's no excuses to be messing up and, and, and falling short in all these different ways. So I, I think I just lit a fire under my own butt to get it together. And it was just a conscious decision, something that it's a daily decision to try to do better and be better. And uh, just taking it one day at a time and, and trying to be the best guy I can do, you know, be one hour at a time, is allowing me to slowly ch change myself. And, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful to start to be... To, to start to be developing respect again amongst the MMA community. And, uh, and I'm excited to just make them really proud. How, how important is that to have the respect of, because again, this is, I talk to people all the time, and at the end of the day, it's still a fight. But how important is it for you to have the respect of other high level athletes uh, in this sport? Oh, it's very important to me. It's very important to me. Um, we all want to be liked at the end of the day. You know, you can walk around like Kobe Covington pretending like you don't care what people think about you. But deep down inside, dude, we all want to have love and we want to be liked. And um, it's, it's not the most important, um, but, yeah, it's something I like to have is love and respect. Now, ahead of this fight, you got Dominic Reyes. He's an undefeated, uh, talented fighter. Does he bring anything to the table that you haven't seen before? Uh, I, it was really hard to say, you know, on the on the mental side, no, um, but uh, on the physical side, um, I only know once I, I get in there with him, you know, what he has to bring to the table. Um, what I can see from the outside uh, when it comes to his skill set, you know, I, I don't really see anything I haven't seen. You know, Vitor Belfort, Leo Machida, they both were southpaws and had a devastating right side of their body. So, no, this feels like a familiar place. It's just a different guy with a different motivation. Just got to see how it's going to go. Oh, yeah. Last one before we got here. Obviously, bad, sad news and just life in general with the passing of Kobe. Well, one thing we saw, uh, you brought your daughters out yesterday. We know we have the girl, Natran. Uh, what does that mean to you? To, to, I mean, you got four daughters, man. That, that's, 
the goat, right? Yeah. What does that mean to you, uh, just as a as a father, as a parent? Man, it was great to just be out there uh, with them yesterday to see their smiles, to put them on the spot, and make them stand up, <laughs> uh, just to encourage them in front of the world, let them know that they can do it. They could be anything they want. Um, it was a powerful message, um, and I hope parents at home are, are doing the same. You know, tell your kids uh, how great they can be. You know. Um, and uh, I, I'm glad that I got that opportunity to do it, just to not only remind them, but to, to say it in front of the world, to you know, confess my love for them in front of the world. There you go, John Jones. Best of luck to you this weekend, sir. You sure, you sure this bracelet ain't my size? It's not your size, my guy. Okay. <laughs>